Hey, Michael Connolly here. I'm on Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles, and this is the Dark Hours Locations Tour. So now we're um, on Cahuenga Boulevard, heading south into Hollywood. And this is actually where the book starts. It starts on New Year's Eve this year. And uh, there's a unsavory tradition in Hollywood of people shooting guns into the air. And what goes up must come down. So the best thing to do is to be under something that can protect you. And more than one police officer has told me over the years that when they worked in Hollywood on, and they had to work on New Year's Eve, they would uh, find a uh, freeway overpass and park underneath it. And so this is the Hollywood Freeway Overpass on Coanga Boulevard. And where this book starts is with Renee Ballard and her partner, Detective Moore, parked right here, surrounded by um, what has become all too prevalent in Los Angeles, a uh, homeless encampment. And they're waiting out the onslaught of bullets that are gonna come down when the clock strikes midnight. And it's the setting, it's the first chapter, but it's also the setting of what's going on in the city since the pandemic and post George Floyd. A lot of things going on in the department. Um, a lot of questions about how we should be policing ourselves, how the police view themselves. And all this is coming about in the conversation between Ballard and her uh, temporary partner, uh, Detective Moore. So this is the starting point. And uh, hopefully we can talk more about it during our virtual discussion. There's no spoilers on this tour. Um, I'm talking about where I'm taking you to locations that are in the early pages of the book. Maybe you know uh, these places, and if you don't, maybe it will help you visualize what's in the book. So while under the underpass, Ballard, who's the detective who takes on any calls that occur, she gets called to the scene of a homicide. Someone has been shot. And I chose this street. This is Gower. And I like this street because it's a, it's a border. On the left side here, it's very dark because we're at night here, but it's the Paramount Pictures. And on the right side is a marginal neighborhood where I think there's a lot of crime and so forth. And so I happen to be familiar with this um, frame shop, uh, this auto repair shop that works on frames and um, I decided to use their parking lot uh, for the location of where this murder occurs. This is just kind of perfect Hollywood that uh, this is a working auto repair yard. A lot of wrecks in there and stuff. But at the same time you can see filming available I guess when you're across the street from the back end of Paramount you do what you can do. And so very quickly in the book, uh, Detective Ballard is off to the races and what happens is she connects this case to um, a guy named Harry Bosch who was a, who was a retired detective who worked on a similar case so she seeks him out quite early in the book. Again, no spoiler here. She seeks him out to get his knowledge and um, he's been mentoring her for a few books now and he uh, and she has to seek him out again. And then we have our pair and they're, uh, everything is set and then we hopefully you enjoy the ride through the book.
Okay, we're on the day side now for a little bit, and I'm at Bird's, uh, one of Harry Bosch's most favorite restaurants in Los Angeles, and it plays a key part in the book, The Dark Hours. Um, all I can say is Harry loves the chicken here. He comes here a lot, whether to sit or to take it to go. So cheers. We're on Woodrow Wilson Drive here in the Hollywood Hills, just near Mulholland Drive. And this is Montcalm Avenue. And the first time I came here was about 35 years ago. And I came as a newspaper reporter and there's a murder right here on the, on the uh, asphalt right below my door here. A woman had been found shot to death at like 7 a.m. in the morning. And um, murders in the Hollywood Hills are pretty rare. Uh, but one on the street is very rare and it, it helped uh, newspaper wise or story wise that there were celebrities tangentially involved uh, this was the home of the famous painter named david hockney so murder victim found on the street in front of his house they sent me up the hills to uh, be there and at that time i was writing the first book with harry bosch and i was looking for a place for him to live i had this idea that if he can afford it as a detective, that he would um, live in a house that gave him at least somewhat of a view of the city that he works in and protects and solves murders in. So I drove up there to that place where the murder was and there was the street was closed off with yellow tape, crime scene tape. And because it was a Hollywood Hills murder, there was a lot of um, media there. So we were all waiting for the LAP to, say, to come to the um, tape and say something. And what transpired was it was going on and on. And so I kind of slipped away, got back in my car and started driving down because on my way up, I saw something that drew my attention. And what it was, was down here, there was a house um, that had burned down. It was a cantilever house, uh, uh, kind of uh, jutting out over the uh, open canyon on metal girders. And it apparently had burned down and they cleared all the debris and it was just the platform. And so I drove back down here and went under more crime scene tape uh, or, or danger tape, yellow tape, don't go out on here because it might be dangerous. And I went out to check out the view and that, that's how I found Harry Bosch's house on Woodrow Wilson. Um, and what's curious about it is that, you know, I wanted it to be realistic and how could a cop on a detective salary, uh, own a uh, a home with a view in the Hollywood Hills, and so that's where I also created this idea that he had been involved in a case that Hollywood made a movie out of, and he had been paid for the use of his name and likeness and the case, uh, his information about the case, and that's how he was able to uh, afford. Uh, to buy the house and this is where it's at and the curious thing to me is that whenever I discovered this place maybe 35 years ago no house has ever been built on that spot it's just nothing is there but you can see the view so why don't we take a look so this is where Harry Bosch's house is in the uh, books and this is his view that's Universal City out there you can even see Harry Potter's uh, castle and then the mountains beyond on the other side of the valley so that's what I liked about it. there's city lights at night but also some of the uh, canyon view and the curiosity or the mystery within the mystery is that nothing was ever built here so this spot has been vacant now for uh, 30 plus years I don't know why that is, because it is a great view. It's been good enough for Harry for uh, most of his adult life. And as far as that murder goes, that was solved, and it was an ex-cop who committed it. It was a ex-wife of his, and uh, she was a nurse who worked for an older gentleman on that street, Montcalm Avenue, and she was the night nurse, and she had completed her work for the night and was driving home 
she saw someone lying in the street and being a nurse she stopped her car and jumped out to see if the person needed help and it turned out it was her ex and he turned and, sh and shot her and left her there in the street and it took a while several months to put it all together but eventually that was a murder that was solved so we're heading south on Coango Boulevard into Hollywood. So we're going to cross over the pilgrimage bridge which cuts across the Hollywood freeway and that will take us into the Dell where a lot of the story of the dark hours takes place. I really have tried to kind of consolidate the storytelling into, uh, into this area. The Hollywood Dell is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Hollywood and, and Los Angeles. And uh, a lot of old homes going up at the hills, up into the Hollywood Reservoir. And for me, things kind of come full circle because my first book, The Black Echo, dealt with a homicide, a murder victim found in a drainage pipe up at the Hollywood Reservoir. And in this new book, we have a variety of crimes that kind of start up in the Hollywood Dell and then go down into Hollywood. And so on a geographic level, to me, it's all very uh, tightly woven. We're also right on the other side of this hill is the Hollywood Bowl. And so there's a lot of like iconic Hollywood here. And then uh, the residential area where in the dark hours, a lot of crimes occur. And one thing I found when I was researching this book and I kind of became fascinated by was how neighborhoods in Los Angeles are, many of them are defined by their street lights. And many are protective of their street light designs and don't want changes. And I think the tendency of the city government is to homogenize everything and, and modernize everything but you have old neighborhoods like in the Hollywood Dell where they stand opposed to changing uh, their street lights and it can become a political fight and so forth and I found that really fascinating and so then my job what I tried to do in the book is turn it uh, you know account for the politics and, and the differences and the design and the style and what they say about communities but also use it in some way uh, to tell the story. And so that's what you have with Renee Ballard, who's the protagonist of this book, who is going to uh, notice this, become aware of it, and realize there's something connecting streetlights to a pattern of uh, uh, sexual assaults that's going on in Hollywood. And uh, that to me was, uh, you know, you're, when you're researching a book, you're looking for ways of staying plugged in and being interested. And that really kept me plugged in. And I found myself at night driving around the different parts of the city looking at, uh, you know, particular street lights and, and the nicknames for them and the real names for the different designs. And so, like, you, what you have in the Hollywood Dell. Not all the streets have street lights, but those that do have them going back more than 50 years, and they're called the uh, uh, the acorn top um, street lights. And so all this to the left is all the Hollywood Dell. Like I say, it's an old Hollywood neighborhood, and it goes up and up and up. And uh, here's a, an example of um, a street light that's pretty old it's the acorn style and this plays um, into uh, the dark hours in a significant way there's a panel at the bottom where they can access the wires and so forth that keep the light lighted and that becomes uh, a clue for for Ballard as she works through this case and in the course of her investigation Ballard even comes to the Bureau of Street Lighting you can see all the different examples of uh, streetlights in Los Angeles.
I found out about all this, I kind of ran into an expert who told me, who schooled me on all the different um, styles of street lights uh, in the city and the politics involved and all that by uh, John yeah. Wellborn, who happens to be the uh, publisher and editor of the Larchmont Chronicle. And so he play, he is actually a, becomes a character in the, in the book, The Dark Hours, and that's uh, a little way of me thanking him for uh, his help with this book. Okay, we're back in the dark hours again. And now we're on Sunset Boulevard, which is iconic in Los Angeles. It runs from downtown all the way out to the ocean. And along that drive, you cut through all the strata of Los Angeles, all the uh, social and cultural strata. And that's what uh, Sunset Boulevard is known for and that's why it plays a part in uh, the dark hours. So we're coming up on where Rene Ballard works, where Harry Bosch used to work. The Hollywood Police Station or the Hollywood Division of the uh, Los Angeles Police Department. Right here, brick building, brick fortress, in case things go sideways. And uh, spent a lot of time here researching the books, researching the character, and of course also uh, filming the Bosch TV show. Okay, that's a wrap on our locations tour for the dark hours. I hope you enjoyed it, and more so, I hope you enjoy the book. Thanks a lot.